Hi, I'm Charmaine James, and I'm talking with Dr. Lewis about horses that bleed. That's where some blood's going to come out their nose while they're running. Um, they may not even show signs of that, but I just want to hear what Doc has to say about that. Yeah. That's uh, EIPH, exercise induced pulmonary hemorrhage, and it's been around for hundreds of years in horses. There was actually a famous thoroughbred horse, I think about 300 years ago, it was named Bleeding Childers, and uh, that's where he got his name from. Uh, Bleeding is something that's a big problem in horse racing in America today, in thoroughbred racing and quarter horse racing. And a lot of what we know about EIPH is based on what we know from the racetrack. But it applies to barrel horses because a significant number of barrel horses bleed as well. And I guess uh, in, a, in a nutshell, I think you have to understand that horses of any discipline are vulnerable to this. Long distance human runners actually get pulmonary hemorrhage. People don't know that. Uh, you mentioned something uh, a moment ago about the horse that bleeds from the nostrils. That's the one everybody sees, but you also made reference to the fact that some horses don't always bleed at the nostrils, and it's all in degrees. Uh, some horses bleed in the lung, and yet it never appears at the nostrils, yet they hemorrhage enough that it can impair performance. The hints are the horse that coughs after they run. You may see a horse that pulls up and you don't see any hemorrhage at the nostrils, but you look and they cough up a little blood. You know, it's coming from the lung. Um, it's easy to diagnose if you got doubts. You don't know they bled, you didn't see the external signs of it. A veterinarian can scope that horse anywhere that day or within the next few days, a couple of days, and they'll still see the evidence of the blood in the windpipe. It's a real quick, easy to do on a standing horse. But some horses bleed and will run in spite of it, uh, and they'll perform pretty well. I've known race horses that were prolific breed bleeders, yet they ran at the top of their game and it didn't affect them. But that's the exception rather than the rule. Most horses that bleed a significant amount, it'll impair performance. And the same's true in my opinion with a barrel horse. If they bleed much, uh, it'll impair performance. What do you do with them? There's a variety of products out here. Uh, that purport to be effective against bleeders, and a lot of the evidence is anecdotal. You know, there's not a lot of scientific research that demonstrates that. The one drug that's been scientifically proven in a very, very rigid study to reduce the incidence and severity of pulmonary hemorrhage is, is Lasix, or Salix is the name today. It's furosemide, it's a diuretic, a loop blocker. It is the one product that is pretty much ubiquitously approved for use to treat bleeders in America today on the racetrack. Ironically, the United States and Canada are about the only two countries in the world that will even allow furosemide on race day. Other countries around the world, for instance in Europe, they'll allow horses to work on it, but they won't allow them to race on it. And it's a matter of opinions in those countries about there's a variety of reasons why they approach it that way, but number one is they like to purport that they're racing horses that are free of any medication on the day of a race. That's the reason they disallow it. We take a little different view in this country because our racing's a little different. Uh, our horses are housed in barns on backsides on racetracks where they're exposed to more dust and environmental things that, <clears throat> that have an effect on the lung. And we, we know that the Furosemide is somewhat protective. If you can reduce the incidence or, or severity of hemorrhage, it's got to be beneficial to the horse's health in the long run, to the health of the lung. So there's a medical justification for giving it. Uh, in the barrel horse, uh, we've tried a variety of things over the years. Lasix or furosemide still is the one that seems to be fairly effective at controlling it. We recommend lower doses in a barrel horse than we do on race horses. Uh, in short, we try to go with the lowest effective dose uh, because Lasix is a diuretic. They're going to make a horse urinate more water off their body. It's also a loop blocker, so those horses tend to deplete potassium somewhat. They spill out more potassium in the urine. Well, for a horse that's hauling in the hot summertime around the country and running back-to-back -back runs, it's a little harder because that racehorse is probably not going to run 
every two or three weeks, so he gets one dose. He may get doses to work a couple of times in between, but think about the horse has mul multiple runs on the weekend as a barrel horse does. Well, the effects of a low dose of Lasix begin to be cumulative. You can tend to dry a horse out if you're not careful, and you, you can also cause some electrolyte deficiencies, particularly with potassium, by using too much of it, which is why I tell people to tr try to use the lowest dose you, you can get away with to control the hemorrhage. Uh, a lot of times, two mLs, for example, two cc's of furosemide will do the job in a barrel horse. We're on the racetrack, you'd probably be giving 10, for example. That's why I was getting that. I, and I think that's why, and justifiably so, a lot of barrel racers look for an alternative treatment because of the negative effects of using furosemide. If they could find something that would help, that didn't uh, dehydrate them and diurese them, that would be preferable. It's just that we haven't seen anything out there that, I haven't seen anything yet conclusively, I think, really, really is that effective. Furosemide is pretty, pretty effective and pretty dependable because you want to stop the hemorrhage. And if you can find something else, it'll do it, great. But if you can't, you're probably left with furosemide. Those horses that are running, basically it'll kind of cut their air off a little bit. Is that, or can well, it cut their air? Or how does that work? You know, I, it, it, it probably, probably affects uh, hemorrhage into the lower airways, affects the movement of air. There's no question about that. Is that what really stops the horse? That may slow a horse down, but what about the horse who just pulls up? You know, I've seen horses do that, and I really, I've always thought that the, that a bleeding episode actually frightens a horse. They get the... Right. They're, they the come out, their eyes get big, and they get worried, and... Sensation of suffocation or starving mm -hmm. for air or something. They can't talk, so they can't tell us. But there's something about that episode that really, really scares a horse. I mean, they almost act like they're scared when they come out. Something stops them. Uh, at best, if they run through a run and, and they don't exhibit those characteristics, they still have that subpar performance. Right, they quit do. running early, and then also, yeah. too, they're affected at the gate before they go in. Well, yeah, a horse is repeatedly bleeding, and if they experience that, it's just like anything else. It's like the sore horse that goes in there and rears up, doesn't want to go in there and run. Right. Bleeding make them do the same thing. Bleeding something's important to control. Uh, obviously, it'd be easy for me to say the best thing to do is quit the horse and rest them, allow the long time to heal. People don't realize what a bleeding episode the pathology that goes on in a lung associated with that. And that doesn't heal overnight, it takes time. Yet we, apparently horses can tolerate a certain amount of that and still go out and compete and perform and do their job. But if, if you could look inside their chest while they're doing it, you'd realize that lung, at least in one area, is not totally normal. So you have to be cautious about that. But, uh, but, but you know, People I hear some home. people putting their horses on antibiotics after a bleeding episode just for infection. And, and if your horse does bleed, he's obviously more prone to getting a respiratory infection. Is that, that right? In or? general, that's true. My old thumb rule was if a horse had bled and went off feed, they went on antibiotics. Because they can get a localized, uh, low-grade focal pneumonia in those areas. That lung's damaged somewhat. And in a, you've always got bacteria in the upper airway anyway, so it's pretty easy for a, for an infection to set up in an area that's damaged in a lung like that. So if they run a little temperature, some horses will. You know, you'll see a horse that has a bleeding episode and two days later spikes a little fever. We'll see that's what's going on in the lung. So horses that run a little temperature or get off feed, we put them on broad spectrum antibiotics. You know, I think that you know, it's not the end all for that horse, but definitely when they're a bleeder, it has to be managed the runs that they make and what you expect out of them, running them throughout the summer, you know, in order for them to keep up a performance that that's worth even taking them down the road. Well, sure. I mean, you may get the horses for refractory to treatment. You can't control it, and you have no choice but to stop. Right. You know, because let me tell you, they're not going to run up, up to snuff anyway. Right. So you just as well stop when you get to that point. Sometimes you have to. Right. Fortunately, a lot of horses respond to a little medicine, a little treatment, you can continue to go on, but be careful with them. You know, you just—it's—it's—it's it's a, it's a, it's not a—it's not such a minor condition as some people purport it to be. It's a, when a lung hemorrhages, that's a significant event.